Hey everyone! So today we're going to be talking about Minecraft for Violin 1, and this is going to be a breakdown of the difficult passages that we're going to be working on together. So let's talk about our first section, the moderato section. This is going to be about quarter equals 120, and the trickiest part of this passage is string crossings. So always remember, the lower the string, the higher the elbow, and the higher the string, the lower the elbow. So let's play a little bit of the first four measures in slow motion, and this is going to help us practice using our elbow to guide our bow. So take a look at measure one through four. One, two, three, four. So notice how my elbow is doing most of the work and it's preparing the bow for different changes. So if you take a look at the first measure, we have these three notes, B, A, and E. And notice how before I play the E on the D string, my elbow is already starting to come up before I change the bow. I'll do that one more time. So the last thing we have to remember with the moderato section is dynamics. Here we have what we call tiered dynamics. That means we're not getting louder or softer between the four measures, but each four measures will take you to a new level of dynamics. So we're starting with piano for the first four measures, moving on to mezzo piano in the next four measures, then mezzo forte in the next four measures, and the last four measures of this section are forte. So let's talk about the march at measure 17. Here we have quarter equals roughly 108. And this is the hardest part of the piece, in my opinion. It has a lot of tricky bowings, um, 16 note rhythms that we have to be careful of. So let's walk through this. So let's take a look at measure 20. Here we have on beat 3 a 16 note rest in the middle of the beat. And this is a good opportunity to, to talk about hooked bowing. And what that means is stopping the bow on the string without lifting it. I'm going to play measure 20 for you in slow motion. 1, 2, 3, 4. So notice how I stopped my bow gently on the string without lifting or putting extra pressure so that you can avoid that crunch sound when we're playing marcato stroke. This is not exactly a marcato stroke, it's a hooked bowing, and that means you want to really subdivide in your head. What that means is for 16th notes that we have here, each beat has four 16th notes. So when you're counting, don't just count the big beats when you're playing, um, practicing slowly at first. Don't just count one, two, three, and four, but make sure to count the subdivisions. What that sounds like is one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And that will really help you lock in with the dotted rhythm that's happening here. I'm going to play measures 19 through 21 just a little bit faster. Here's measure 19. One, two, three, four. As always, don't forget to practice slowly with a metronome before our goal tempo is of 108. This time I'm going to play one more time and I'll be counting out the subdivisions in the middle of measure 20. So here's measure 19 once more. One, two, three, four. So now let's talk about measure 23. Measure 23 has four consecutive dotted uh, 16 note rhythms, but this time they're slurred and not hooked. So don't stop your bow. Um, there's a lot of string crossings here as well, so practice it slowly. Here's measure 23 in slow motion. One, two, three, four. Here's measure 23 even slower with the subdivisions counted to prepare us for the rhythm. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. Now let's move on to measure 35. And here we have our first section that's marked marcato. Marcato is a type of articulation that we can achieve using our bow, right? Our bow takes care of most of our articulation work, while our left hand can also be expressive with vibrato, intonation, and other things like that. But with our bow, marcato is really a big, grand kind of bow stroke, and you want to use a lot of your bow in the middle with 
your full bow hair. So don't tilt your bow um, one side, one way or the other, but make sure your bow hair is flat and that you're making really nice solid contact with your strings. So let's uh, play measure 35, pick up into measure 35 slowly. One, two, three. So notice how I measure 35 and 36, I am really putting a lot of pressure um, behind the bow. It's not marked as accented, but marcato is still a very powerful bow stroke where you can hear the bow changes. So I'm giving more emphasis in measure 37 because there are accents notated, but in measures 35 and 36, with the exception of that first beat in 35, it should still, you, you should still be able to hear most of the bow changes. So let's talk about measure 39. This is our new section titled Slowly. And for obvious reasons, this is our slowest section of the piece uh, at quarter note equals 52. There are not that many tricky spots to know about this passage. Um, just the fact that this is a different key now. We don't have any sharps or any flats. So the biggest difference is playing that F natural nice and low as I've marked in the music. Let's take a look at measures 47 through 50 slowly. One, two, three, four. So in the last beat of measure 49, um, with two eighth notes, they're both G. It's a G to G octave. And this is kind of difficult to do in first position, but I, I, I know most of us are comfortable in first position, so I put the fingering in first position there. You're totally welcome to play in third position. That might solve a little bit of the string crossing issue. But if you were to play it in first position, practice that string crossing. You will be jumping and skipping the A string, going directly from the D string to the E string. So really focus on elbow movement and go slowly. Here's an example of the last beat of measure 49. So notice how in slow motion, my bow is stopped on the A string so that there's no sound. Um, the open A will not sound if you do that and try to skip over to the E string. When you're playing a little bit faster, that will be masked and the, the audience probably won't hear a stop in the sound, especially if you're playing with your friends. So now let's move on to section uh, con moto at measure 51. And this is now at quarter note equals 88. The hardest part about this passage is rhythm. So please, please, please practice slowly with a metronome, count the subdivisions, and really, really feel where the downbeat of each measure is, so the first beat of each measure. Try not to accent the first beat. If, you, if there's a syncopation, a note that's tied over the measure, you don't necessarily need to accent the downbeat, you just need to feel it inside. So don't show it with your, with your bow, but feel it in, in your body. Let's play a little bit at measure 51 under tempo. One two, three, four. So if you take a look at the third and fourth beat of measure 51, you'll see that those that interval is a fifth. And what that means is you're going from the same finger, third finger on D string, to the same finger, third finger on A string. And that's a little bit difficult because we either have to block our finger, meaning we place our finger right in between two strings so that we don't have to lift to achieve that sound, or we have to lift our finger and, and from, from the third finger on the D string to the third finger of the A string. So what I usually like to do in this passage is to lift, just because the second note is a long and expressive note, and if those of you who are ready for uh, vibrato uh, would like to use it, this would be a note to, to use it. And to do that, you can't really block your finger, you have to lift so that your full finger is on the A string. So let's play um, 51 slowly so you can see that lifting action. One, two, three, and four, and.
Here's just the third and fourth beat of measure 51. One and two and. So notice how I'm lifting my finger right after I play the G on D string so that I can make it to the A string and be able to vibrate that note. Let's move on to measure 63. It says listesso tempo is our section and its chord note equals 88 because listesso tempo means in our Italian musical lingo, it means that it's the same exact tempo. So it may be a new section with a new message, but the tempo, the quarter note BPM, stays the same throughout. To me, the most challenging part in this is the low four on the E string. We now have a B flat that's very, very expressive. Feel free to vibrate if you're ready for that. And um, I would really encourage to work on intonation in this passage. Let's play a little bit at measures 67 through 70. One, two, three, four. The other thing to note is measure 73, you have your first 2-4 measure. This is a really nice way for composers to make things different, to make things sound new, or to transition into a new section. There are a lot of ways that composers could write this 2-4 measure in. And the most important thing to do as players is to really count and feel what the composer is trying to tell us. So make sure to count just the 2-4 measure when you're playing by yourself or with your friends. Now let's take a look at measure 80. Measure 80, you have um, our first real opportunity to shift into a higher position. Um, what we've noted here is shifting into second position. I know most of us are really comfortable in the first position and third position, but I don't feel the need to go all the way to third position just to jump back down to first a measure later. So here we have um, a good use of second position that can help us. And what you really want to do is shift right on beat 4 of measure 80 and that will give you the opportunity to play those two measures um, out in second position and then the downbeat of 82 right back into first position. I'll play this passage slowly for you. One, two, three, four. So what I would really encourage um, at measure 80 is to practice this whole passage, these four measures, under tempo, but also stopping before the shifts and basically magnifying that dead space. So don't lift your bow. All you have to do is stop and shift and then continue. So I'll do that for you this time with that thought process in mind. Here's measure 80 one last time. One, two, three, four. So once you've done that a few times and have eliminated any shifting noises, then it would be nice to connect everything together and play it with a metronome and tempo. Let's move on to our last section at 84, grandioso, very grand, majestic, and this is our finale section at quarter note equals 108, so it's picked back up quite a bit. So the trickiest part about this passage is the time signature, and here we have a time signature that says 7-4. So just remember, the number on the top means how many beats are in a measure. So that's seven beats in a measure. The number at the bottom, here we have four. It means what type of note gets the beat. So in this case, we have one-fourth, and that just means quarter note. So there are seven quarter notes in a measure. This passage is also full of marcato bow strokes. There's a lot of accents throughout, so you want to really put pressure at the beginning of each stroke when you see the accents, but even without that, it is marcato strokes. So play up, play big, use a lot of bow, and really don't be afraid to dig in at the bow changes. So I'm gonna play 84 to 86 for you under tempo so that you can hear the difference between the marcato stroke without accents and with accents. Here's measure 84. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 
notice in measure 86 those accents that are down bow really stand out put a lot of weight and use let gravity help you with that stroke so let's take a look at 92 we have a very interesting dynamic marking and it's marked piano sub the sub stands for subito and that means um, surprise or all of a sudden in Italian and what that means is that we're at forte all the way from 84 to 91 but as soon as we reach 92 we suddenly drop down to piano and that goes on for two measures until we suddenly bring it back up right on a downbeat of 94 back to forte don't forget your accents don't forget your ritardando we'll slow down together as a group and um, make sure to lift before the last note so that we can get back to a down bow and then connect and finish with an up bow. So here's measure 92 to the end, a little bit faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Last but not least, the last two measures is also in an interval of a fifth. That means you have to either choose to block your finger or lift. Because it alternates so much, my preference is to block the, my finger, and that means I'm putting my second finger down in the middle of both the A and E string. So this will be low two on both the A and E string. You're obviously free to do what feels comfortable for you, but practice this section slowly so that you can figure out what is the best way to play that in tune. So that's it for our Minecraft Violin 1 breakdown video. Thanks for watching, and please click onto the play along video of the same piece so that we can play this together. Happy practicing!